So we had three Sunday school classes every Sunday at John Hockey, and we did not have an evening service on Sunday, but we had Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evening services. Um, so this picture down here is the second place that we met. Um, we needed to give up the first house because the people who owned it had family coming and didn't have any place else for them to stay. So we had to give up the first house. Um, but another family who lived two doors down um, invited us to use their living room until we could find some place else. Well, um, this is giving some discipleship classes. Um, but when we didn't find any place else, but after the winter vacation was over, which is in July, um, <laughs> we, um, the same family who was letting us use their living room said, um, my cousin is moving out of this other house that we have, which was about 15 by 15, so it was a larger area. They said, they're moving out um, because they're going back to where they're from. If you want to use that house, you can use it as long as you want um, for the church, and it can be where the church is. And so um, that is where we meet now, and um, this is my partner, Luz. You can see she's very pale. Um, <laughs> which makes me happy and it makes her happy too because they all want to be very pale. Um, uh, but this family over here on the right is the family that is letting us use that building. And um, they came in, they said, you can use this building as long as you want. So um, we started having services there and the next um, week when we went in for services, um, Paula had put fabric on the walls. Um, they, he had brought in um, benches and all the extra chairs in their house had put in there. Um, they put two tables in there and had it all set up for a church for us. And we came in and we were like, wow, this is really good. This actually looks like a church. <laughs> um, so, um, so they are actually serving kind of as lay pastors there. They had been involved in a church of the Nazarene in Trujillo, which is on the coast where there are lots of Nazarene churches. And they moved to um, Pucallpa because he is from the jungle. And so they moved back to where he was from. But in John Hawking, there were no churches and they couldn't go anywhere. And so they were really excited when they saw the Nazarene symbol. Um, and they were like, this is our church, you know. And so they have been very helpful and um, are actually acting as lay pastors there in that church. And some of the other families, this is another loose and her three kids. And this is Josue. <coughs> Josue attends the John Hawking Church, but he actually lives across the street in La Paz. Um, and so he has electricity in his house, which is important for this story. Um, Josue has been involved with, since we had the Bible school, he came to the Bible school and he has uh, come to the services. Um, uh, Josue one day was sitting in his house watching TV, um, so that's important because he has electricity across the street. There is no electricity in John Hawking. Um, so he was sitting there watching TV and he smelled something hot and he thought it was the DVD player or the television. So he went over and checked and it wasn't that, so he sat back down. But he was sitting there for a minute and he smelled it again. And so he went in the other room and saw that his sister had left the... Um, iron plugged in when she ironed her clothes for school. The younger kids go to school in the morning and the older kids go to school in the afternoon. So he had gone in the morning and his sister when she got her clothes ready for the afternoon had forgotten to unplug the iron. So he um, went over and the electricity is an extension cord with, um, with three places to plug in things at the end of it. And so he um, grabbed a hold of that extension cord and the cord coming out of the top was bare and so his thumb got on it and it started shocking him. Well, he screamed a little bit, but his mom works in front of the house. Um, she has a Commodore, which is where people who don't have very much money can come and get a meal for um, one or two soles, where it would be four or five soles if they went somewhere else. And so she and the neighbor lived around this Commodore, and so they were up there cooking and getting things ready for lunch. And she heard him scream, but she thought it was just something he was watching on TV because it was just blah, you know, and it wasn't 
he did it wasn't a lot of force. And so he was standing there being shocked, and um, his older brother came in and passed him, and his older brother thought he was just playing because they do that sometimes. And um, so his mom, about 25 minutes later, came back with a plate of food for her husband when he got home from work, and she was taking it to the kitchen. Well, he saw his mom pass the doorway, and he screamed again, and she was like, that's really weird that he's doing that. And so she set the plate down and went in where he was and saw him being shocked. Well, because lots of people don't have electricity, um, they aren't trained in what to do, how we know that you can't touch them. Or And she said her first reaction was to grab him and pull him away. And she said something just told her, don't touch him, get something to knock the electricity away. And she said she had never heard anything like that before. But she was like, in her head, she just knew not to touch him. And so she found a broom and knocked the electricity away. But when she walked in and saw him being shocked, it had been 25 minutes, and his arms were black, and um, he had big knots on his head where the water was trying to escape his body. And so um, when she knocked the electricity away, he went flying across the room, and um, the neighbor lady came in, and she said, um, what happened? And she said, look at my son. He was breathing, but not very well. And um, the neighbor lady said, well, he needs some sugar water. Because in Peru, sugar water and Vicks Vapor Rub cure everything. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so um, they gave him some sugar water, and nothing happened. And so they took him to the clinic there. Um, it's in another little village, but it's the closest medical um, thing. So they took him to the clinic. And the doctor, as soon as he walked in, said, no, he needs to get to the hospital as fast as you can get him there. So they were able to get a taxi and get him to the hospital, which um, probably took about 20 minutes because um, John Hawking is about um, five miles outside of um, the arena. So they got him to the arena hospital. And when he got in there, um, the doctor said, this water that is trying to escape his body needs to come out, but we don't want his head to rupture because it could cause brain damage. And so uh, she said, as soon as the doctor got done saying that, where his thumb had been attached to electricity, ruptured, and she said it was just like a fountain coming out of his thumb. And when that stopped, all of the swelling in his head was gone and his arms were not black anymore. And um, the doctor is like, this is amazing. You know, I've never seen anything like it. And um, the doctor said, is there anything that you need? And he said, I'm really thirsty. <laughs> um, so they gave him some water. But um, uh, the, the doctor said uh, that he had a little bit of an irregular heartbeat, which was to be expected. Um, but that um, he needed to go home and rest and not go to school the next day. And the day after that, to come back and let him check his heart. And so when he went back to the doctor in a couple days, um, his heart was perfectly fine. But after um, the fountain came out of his thumb, um, the doctor took him out in the waiting room and said to the people who were waiting, do you see this little boy? He's a miracle. He has been shocked for 25 minutes. Some people are shocked for seconds and die. And he has been shocked for 25 minutes and he's living. And um, I didn't tell you, electricity in Peru is 220. So, um, so even stronger. But um, but Josue um, went home from the hospital that night and um, started to change his clothes. And his mom said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm going to church. And she said, no, you're not. You're getting in bed like the doctor said. And she said, I'll send your sister over to tell Luce and Katie what happened. And they'll come over after church. You get in bed. And so it ended up, I went ahead and did the service. And Luce went ahead over. Um, with his sister and talked to him and then I went over after the service but um, he was fine and everything. He had been baptized two weeks before that and um, and this is the last night we were there um, pictured with him and his friends but he um, the next week when he did come back to church um, his at the end of the service because we have announcements and offering at the end of the service. Um, so at the end of the service, Luce said, does anybody want to give a testimony or um, anything? And 
he said, yeah, I want to say something. So he got up. He was 11 years old. He got up and he said, I want to thank the Lord that it was me that got shocked because my brother and my sister didn't get shocked and my mom didn't get shocked. My dad didn't get shocked. My little sister didn't come in and grab a hold of me. Um, and I'm glad it was me because I'm ready to go to heaven and they're not ready to go. And so um, he has been a huge witness for his family. His older brother has been in some trouble with the police um, and different things. But since this happened to him, his um, siblings are coming to the services. His mom is taking discipleship classes in the house because she's afraid to leave the house at night for the robbery. But, um, but he has been a huge witness on his family. So um, that's our mayor joined John Hawking. Um, Here's some of the other kids. Um, we had, right before we left Pucallpa, we had a service in, um, in the central church and had all of the groups that we had started come along with the <coughs> churches that were already there in Pucallpa. And we were able to pack the church. There was um, people standing up um, all around the edge because of all the people that um, came that night. But this was a group from John Hawking that came. And this is the last Sunday that we were in John Hawking. We didn't tell them that we were going to have a combined Sunday school class. Um, but this is everybody that came um, for Sunday school that morning. So we have a big group there. And, and this isn't even everybody because we didn't tell them we were going to have a combined Sunday school class. And the third place is La Victoria. La Victoria um, is 19 kilometers outside of the city, which is about 10 miles. And um, La Victoria, this is a typical house there. Um, the people who live there are mostly Shipibo, um, which they dress like this. Um, uh, but they, the Shipibo people are very superstitious, and they are afraid of white people. They call us Pelicaras, and which means face peelers. And um, John thinks this is hilarious. Um, they call us face peelers, and they actually, because we tried to start every place with Sunday school to get the kids involved, and then the adults would come. So in in La Victoria, we couldn't understand. We we announced Sunday school and everything, and nobody was coming. And we couldn't understand why. Well, then one of the ladies, Lucila, um, Lucila said, um, well, it's because they think you're Pelly Cars. But she is Shapibo as well. But her family had a natural healing um, business and resort where people from other countries would come for herbal medicines and stuff. And so she was used to being with other people from other countries. And so she wasn't afraid. And everybody was telling her, you need to not send your kids um, over there for Sunday school because those are Pelly cars and they'll steal your kids. They thought that we would steal the kids and steal their organs and fat and send it to the United States and then peel the faces off of the children so nobody would recognize um, the children. I said, um, people, first of all, there's two things. When I see blood, I pass out, so I'm not peeling anybody's face off. <laughs> and... Secondly, in the United States, we pay to get rid of fat, so nobody wants your fat. <laughs> so, um, so by the end, we were having about 12 to 15 people um, coming to 